Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can pick up psychic information using psychometry. Now if you like videos about psychic development and how to strengthen your psychic muscle, feel free to subscribe. I have all sorts of content around that topic. So what exactly is psychometry? Psychometry is the ability to touch objects and pick up information about someone or something from that physical touch. Now I really quick want to dispel a myth. Psychometry is not its own Claire. It's not Claire psychometry. It is Claire sentience that you are technically using. Um, and so if you aren't sure if it's a Claire or not, just think about the five senses. The Claire's are your five senses extended. They're your, your extra sensory senses. <laughs> um, and so what are your five senses? You have taste, touch, smell, um, hearing and seeing and so those are your five senses and so when you are using an object and holding it you are using the sense of touch the psychic touch to pick up information and that's the how that's the Claire um, so that's technically clairsentience now clairsentience you don't actually have to be holding objects you can pick up emotions you can pick up feelings so this is kind of like clairsentience um, going in reverse I would say it's holding something and then receiving information so it's not its own Claire, it's sort of like a subset of clairsentience. And so what you want to do, depending on what you're reading, is, you know, ask for something that is on someone a lot. Because the idea here is that, okay, say I want to read your dog, um, and I really like using um, psychometry. Then maybe I'll ask for, like, your dog's collar, or to bring your dog's blanket that he sleeps with a lot. Um, and the thought here is that when someone is using something a lot, somebody is touching something a lot, it's kind of like they leave their energy around it. Um, so if you have something that like you just bought, that might not be a good example that you could give somebody if they were trying to read you. So like, for example, your keys, this is probably something you carry around all day, every day. And so this is an easy one to hand over to a psychic because this is on me all the time. I'm constantly touching it. You can also use jewelry. Wedding rings are definitely something because you know people wear it every day. You can use this to pick up their energy. Now again, another thing you can use is holding um, your client's hand. So if you're a psychic and you want to pick up information or if you're learning, you can ask the person my hands are black from my automatic drawing video that I just made. So say you're a person that wants to get a reading from me. I ask you to hold out your hands. I hold your hands and we can hold hands for like a good 15, 20 seconds. Um, and then I can just sort of feel that energy. So if you ever have a psychic do that, that's kind of like a way for them to connect. Also, if you are a psychic and this really works for you and pretend you have like a reading and you're just like really struggling, you can stop in the middle of the reading and just say, hey, I'm feeling disconnected. Can I just hold your hands for a few minutes? Um, this is something that I don't do because I'm just not like a touchy person and it makes me really uncomfortable. And so when I um, learned this and tried it out because I had to try everything, um, I, I tried it and I was just like, that just made me super uncomfortable and I'm not going to do it again um, because it actually got in, in the way for me receiving psychic information. So know what works for you and what doesn't. If someone has passed, you can also use something of theirs that they used often, hairbrush, pendant. This is like my grandmother's old... Um, Ouch. I don't know, is that the right word? <laughs> All right, well, how do you do it? First off, you set your boundaries, yay! You guys are probably so sick and tired of me talking about this, but before you do any intuitive work, set your boundaries, get protected, I have all those videos on it. Um, basically, you want to just make sure that you are aware of who you're talking to and you are safe and you are protected. And you might be wondering, well, I'm talking to this object, like why do I still have to do that? Um, and it's because, you know, even if I am reading this object, I might still be getting information from my guides. Um, and so it's very important that you are still connected to somebody for your highest and best good because you don't want somebody else like talking into your ear and giving you wrong information or negative information. Once you're protected, once you're grounded, once you're ready to go, you want to pick up that object. Now a few things could happen as soon as you touch this. You could get like that immediate claircognizant download and you can just start talking and you got a bunch of information. Awesome. Um, but if it's taking a little bit longer, what you can do is a few things. The first one is imagine sending your energy to the object. And I know that's kind of odd, um, but sort of sit with your energy, meditate, 
find your center and then try to move your energy into the object. Um, and sometimes that really helps and you can sort of feel the energy of the keys um, a little bit better. Another thing you can do instead is just feel the vibration that this item has. And so you can just sit and just feel if it has any energy to it. Is it hot? Is it cold? And I don't mean literally, I mean like clairsentiently. Um, you might feel like the energy like swirls a certain way. You might feel like it pulses or vibrates, but just feel for it. And then as soon as you sort of start feeling it, try to match your energy to it. So if you can imagine your energy pulsing in the same way and try to get like in sync with it. Um, and that's just like another way to like connect better clairsentiently. If you're still struggling, maybe just try some other clairsentient exercises. Don't feel like if you're not feeling something that you can't pick up information. Um, you might end up just picking information up through a different clair. Then once you feel sort of in tune with this object, go ahead and ask it a question. You can ask it a question, you can ask your guides the question. Um, I don't think it quite matters too much here, but you could test it out both ways and see if you have better results. Um, and so ask, um, what was this person like? What do I need to know about this person? Does this person have anything to say? I usually try to start with personality because you want to make sure you're connecting to the right person, especially if they're deceased. Um, and you can try to, if your client's in front of you, be like, oh, okay, are you uh, this type of person? Um, and then um, they can kind of give you feedback and let you know, yeah, that sounds like me. No, that doesn't sound like me. So then you know you're tuning into the right energy. And then you can just give the information that you get. And whenever you're feeling disconnected, you can come back to the object, touch it again, and just keep reading and holding that object. That almost sounds too easy, but it really is. <laughs> you're just using your clairsentient ability by holding something. Now again, it's totally okay if you're holding it and you start picking it up through other clairs. If you're trying to force yourself to use psychometry, just tell your guys, no, 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 I want to feel it. I want to feel the information coming through. For me, I feel like the physical distraction is too much. Like I feel like I'm just gonna like play with the thing and not be in my intuitive mind. So again, if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. There's different things that work for different people. Just remember to take your time with this because this might not be something that right away you just like touch something and you just get this like download a lightning bolt of information. I think that once you start practicing a lot, it could definitely turn into that. Um, and I also think that if you are totally new, sometimes that fast download like happens. But I feel like if you're in this in between of practicing and understanding your clairs, sometimes it can be a little bit harder. Not saying that as like a general absolute. And just think about it this way. I mean, we go around and we're touching things all the time. And so if we were constantly picking up psychic information on like every single thing we touched, then it would just be overwhelming. So you kind of have to remember to turn on that ability and force yourself to use it psychically. Now, some people might have the opposite problem. If you are really picking up information from things by touching them, you're very clairsentient, which probably means you are very empathic. Empathic people sometimes have a hard time shutting that off because they feel things. And it's very hard to determine the difference between your normal like day-to-day -day feelings um, and then other people and spiritual information coming in. And so like knowing that separation is a lot harder because it's so physical, um, it's a lot harder to be like, okay, what's me and what's not me. So if you feel like you're getting a lot of information when you are touching things and you don't like it, be sure to watch my video on like how to shut your psychic ability off. Side note on impasse, impasse are also just like another way to say that someone is very clairsentient. Um, Claire empath is not a clair. So if I'm very clairsentient, I could say I'm very clairsentient or I could say I am an empath. But basically the thing there is I feel things. I feel other people's emotions. I feel physical sensations which is very different than clairvoyance or clairaudience, which is like see, um, seeing and hearing. So empaths are just another word for people who are very clairsentient. Doesn't mean that's like a whole different clair. So there's all sorts of ways you can use psychometry to read um, different people, different situations. Obviously the first is if you're reading a client, grab something of theirs to better tune into their energy. And you could just do this at the beginning and when you're meditating, just hold on to something and then you can set it to the side for the rest of the reading. It could just be like something you use to meditate with. Again, if you're like really serious about using this in your work, try to force yourself to hold somebody's hands once. Um, and you can always make a joke afterwards and lighten the energy. Um, but I 
think forcing yourself to do things um, can be surprising because you might actually find that it works really well for you. Another way you can use psychometry is to connect with people in spirit, people that have passed away. So you can use pictures, you can use items of theirs, um, pendants, again things that were on them a lot. And I think this works really well honestly for mediumship because I don't know about you guys, but um, when I'm reading somebody with psychometry that has passed versus somebody who's still alive, I just feel like I get way more information. Especially if that object has a smell, sometimes that clairaliance kind of comes in and it kicks in and you just get even more information because you're just like, whoa. Again, not saying that that's like a hard and fast rule, but it's just different for different people. Try out all of these exercises and tips and you're gonna find what works for you and what doesn't. Another way you can use it is for crystals, and I absolutely love this exercise. So say you need more energy um, of some sort, so you need more protection or you need more love in your life, and so you go to a store and you buy a crystal that represents love or protection. And then um, you can basically meditate while holding this crystal. And again, use that same exercise of just like sending your energy to the crystal, or what you can do is, again, sense the vibration vibration of the crystal and it's crazy because different crystals have different vibrations and then match your vibration to the crystal and when I was doing this with rose quartz it the, for the first time it was intense because that rose quartz was just like crazy vibrating and I felt like my whole arm just like was on fire it was so cool so I think that's honestly where I use psychometry most is for working with crystals um, but try it out literally different crystals will have different vibrations it's so cool and then if you really want to see the difference of like do my crystals charge or like when I cleanse my crystals do they change this is another fun way to um, see that difference now you can also use psychometry through tarot cards and this is honestly how I pull cards is I will feel the cards and I will feel when to stop. Um, before you do a reading, you can also just sit with the cards, hold them, put your hand on them, and just feel them. Feel their energy. Again, you can send your energy to them or see if there's energy, energy coming from them, and then you can get started reading. Now, I don't think that like decks themselves have like personality or like they're not like a being, you know, like an animal or a person. Um, but I do think they have energy so like I will choose different cards for different types of readings like this deck I will always pull up when I need like light energy I have another deck that I like to call it like my hard-hitting deck that like really tells the honest truth like when I need to hear it and I just feel like that's that cards energy so if you get a new deck do this exercise sit with it and just feel the energy of this deck and then it will also just help you connect better in a reading and just feel more intuitive for knowing how to shuffle and knowing what card to pick. Another way you can use psychometry that I think a lot of people unknowingly use is for connecting with plants in nature. So like people who hug trees, technically what they're doing is they're trying to like pick up that energy through psychometry by feeling. So what you can also do is go out into a garden, like sit with a flower, touch the flower, and like see if you get any messages from it. And I know that seems a little bit crazy, but I took a shamanic course and this course was at this woman's house and she had all sorts of um, plants and herbs in her backyard. And I was a little skeptical going into it, but I would sit out there and I would touch them or I would sometimes I just use my psychic ability. But um, it was crazy how different plants had different energy and sometimes you could feel they were like give me water <laughs> um, Or I have too much water. So just think about touching any sort of earth element and picking up its vibration um, And when I say vibration like I remember being so thrown off by that term It's really just like what do you feel does it give you emotions? Does it create a sensation? Does it make you feel grounded? Does it make you feel more intuitive? But you could even do this in water. You could do this with sand. I think this is why so many people love going out into the woods. Heck, even seashells. When you're like on the beach, pick up a seashell, see what it has to say. You can basically walk around nature, pick up anything, hold it, and see if there's a message there. So the last way you could use this as like a fun little exercise is to go into an antique store. Walk into an antique store, find something that's old and see if you can pick up any information on the original owner. Now be sure if you are doing this that you are protecting yourself because you don't know if that old owner is still like around in a negative way or if they've passed and they moved on and they're in a positive place. 
Um, for example, one time I went into an antique store literally just to try this exercise and I felt like there was such a negative spirit in there um, who was like really mad that his stuff was in there and he was still so attached to his things. Um, he felt so like earthbound is like the only way I can think of describing it like I felt like I could just see his whole body and like I I legitimately thought he was another person in the store and I asked my husband I was like wasn't there another guy down here and my husband was like no we were the only two that walked down he down here because it was in the basement but yeah he had super intense energy and because I was intuitive he immediately is gonna come up and start talking to me and being like oh my gosh get my stuff out of here and I'm like whoa no and so it took me a second to like set my boundaries and that's when I was learning and I now I go into those stores and make sure that I have my bubble up um, but just be careful when you're doing that that you really um, take that time to protect yourself ahead of time and remember you guys when you are done make sure you disconnect pull your energy back from this object from whoever you are reading make sure to turn your psychic ability off reset your boundaries reset your bubble clear out your room do all those exercises that you need to do to basically make sure that your psychic ability is turned off and that you and beings of your highest and best good are the only ones in your space. Especially you empaths out there, make sure that you are shutting off and disconnecting and doing all that because if this works really well for you and you're using it a lot, you're using your clairsentient ability and that's feelings and emotions and picking up other people's stuff. So it's extra important that you really make sure you shut everything down. So let me know in the comments down below if this worked for you or not. I'm very curious um, how many other people out there are like me and just like feel like it's a distraction or if it really works well for you. If you really enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I have more psychic development tips and exercises coming your way. I actually have a video coming up on how to go deeper into psychic information and just get like deeper and more accurate information. If you feel like you're kind of just like stuck at this surface level, like you're just getting like one or two things and you really want to go and get more every time that you're doing a reading, um, subscribe, look out for that video because I have that coming your way. I usually try to get informational videos up to you guys like once a week. Um, and then I also go live once a week to do um, readings. Alrighty. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye.